Welcome back everybody to another episode of Straight Talk on Photography. I'm Adam Welch and this is our fourth episode, if you can believe it. We're going to be doing something a little bit different today and that is going to be working with Photoshop. Yeah. Um, over the last few weeks I posted a few images to my social media, my Facebook, my Instagram, some photographs of trees, um, which were a little bit more than that. The trees have kind of a mystical, dreamlike effect, kind of a streaking. Um, and I received quite a few questions actually from folks asking how exactly you do that. Uh, these are the photos in question. Now, long story short, this effect is achieved in Photoshop, but please don't let that scare you. Uh, it's very simple, one of the most easy edits you're ever gonna do. I know some people get uh, intimidated. I used to be one, very intimidated when you start talking Photoshop. You know, the layer mask, uh, all that kind of thing, you know, it's too complicated. No, it's really not. And I'm gonna show you just how not complicated it is here in just a second. We're gonna start off with a raw file, completely unedited. Uh, start off in Adobe Lightroom CC, uh, Lightroom Creative Cloud. Do a few basic edits there, send it over into Photoshop, apply our streaking, kind of the mystical effect, if you wanna call it that. Send it back over into Lightroom for some basic you know, final tweaking, that kind of thing. And then uh, that will be it. So I'm gonna kick the camera off of this fugly mug and switch over to the screen capture just to show you how this is done easily. So let's get to it. Now what we've done here is open up our raw file in Adobe Lightroom CC. And this is gonna be what we're gonna work with to make our little dreamlike streaking effect. Um, what you want to do first is take your raw file, apply your basic edits, your basic processing before you throw it over into Photoshop to actually make the shrieking effect. Now, there, there again, this is the original file and through some kind of magic, I will show you my edits that I've made to it. And this is gonna be the image that we work with in Photoshop. Just to give you a quick uh, little split screen here. This is what we started out with and this is what we're going to use to make our edit. Um, so the easiest way to get it over into Photoshop is by right clicking on the image, going to edit in and selecting Adobe Photoshop. And this should open up Photoshop and we can do the edit um, really, really easy folks, no, no kidding. Um, and then bring it back into Lightroom for the final, um, final edits. All right, now we have the image opened up in Photoshop, we're going to start with the edit. The first thing we're going to need to do, you're going to look over here, get a little bit bigger for you, you're going to look over here, this is our uh, layers panel. Uh, the easiest way to do what I'm going to have you do next with the keyboard shortcut, but we're going to duplicate this background image. You can either right click, hit duplicate layer, or the easiest thing to do is hit control J. And you can see that copy popping up there. Um, this is going to be where we apply our streaking mask. And this is the only layer that you're going to work with in Photoshop. So don't let it intimidate you. All right, now that we have the new layer here, we're going to go up to filter, go into blur, and we're going to be looking for a motion blur. Click motion blur. Now, you can see it's already uh, added the streaking. This probably is already looking familiar and it's already maxed out. One important thing to remember when you're working with uh, this kind of streaking, this kind of blur, uh, when you have the trees, you want to make it follow the um, generally 90 degree, you know, straight up and down uh, direction of the tree. You do that with your little uh, cursor here. You can tilt it like that, it looks like a clock. Uh, the easiest thing you can do, if you don't want to kind of go back and forth, try to get it exactly up and down, easiest thing you can do, hit 90 and that's going to zero it for you. Another important thing to remember here is that more is not always better. Uh, the distance is what's going to be controlling the actual amount of the blur you apply. Take it all the way down to zero, that's going to be somewhere around you know, getting close to maximum, depending on your image, less may work better for you. Or then again, more may work better for you. In our case, I'm gonna back it off just a little bit. Oh, why not? Let's go to 2000. We'll just kind of see how it works. So once you get the exact direction and the amount of the motion blur you want, click OK. That's going to apply the blur, 
but it is doing it to our new layer we cre we uh, made only. So our original image is going to be just fine. You can turn it actually off and on. See, there it is. He's just hiding. So let's turn it back on. And now next what we're going to do, since we don't want this effect everywhere, basically we just want it here in these trees. I'm going to try to leave these leaves over here, no pun intended, alone. Um, of course, don't want to mess up the foreground with the streaking. So mainly right here in the middle. So to do that, let's turn our layer back on. We're going to be working with the copy layer with the effect, and we're going to add a layer mask to that. That's going to let us paint in and out the effect where we want it. So we're going to be painting on top of the white, our layer here. So we're going to use the black. You can toggle back and forth. And I'm going to show you more about that in just a second. So we're going to take and select our adjustment brush. And I'm going to leave everything the opacity and the flow 100% each start at the bottom here and look at that we're just going to paint out the effect where we know for a fact that we don't want it and then we can go in and change our opacity and our flow so we're not really killing the brush here it makes it a lot easier to work with now I'm going to be going a little bit faster but please take your time work with it as long as you need to get that effect that you want. And as I move up, you're going to see how that streaking is just going to disappear off a lot of the image, which is exactly what we want. So another minute or two painting in here. Get rid of that there. And there we go. I'm going to take out a little bit from the center and just blend that up just like that. Take that flow down. Now, to bring in those leaves some more. There we go. Now, make sure that's blended in. And let's say we went, I can already see a few places, let's say we went a little bit overboard with taking the effect out. It's just as easy to paint it back in. We're going to toggle to where it is white on black. Don't worry about that kind of lingo with Photoshop right now. And we're just going to paint the effect right back in where we want a little bit more. Or should I say where we take out a little too much. And there you go. Looking pretty good. Like I said, for time purposes, we're going to stop here. And oh, one more. Take a little bit of that out. Why not? Now, let's say we're done here in Photoshop. I'm going to exit out. It'll ask me do I want to save it or not. I hit yes, and this is going to bring it back into Lightroom for a few more basic edits before we're completely finished with this photo. And now, just like magic again, we're back in Lightroom with the photo that we work with in Photoshop with these edits applied. Now, I want to make sure that these trees stand out a little bit more. So, what I'm going to do is add some contrast, but look how much more contrasted the foreground is going to be. So I don't really want that. So let's get rid of the total global contrast. And we're going to switch to our old friend, the graduated filter. So we can just get the contrast in those trees up top. So let's add that in. And then maybe down that exposure just a little bit. Not much at all. Maybe a little bit more than that. There we go. And let's bring down those highlights, add a little clarity just in there in those trees. That's looking pretty good. Now let's warm that up just a little bit. And folks, that is basically, of course, you can work with this more if you wanted to, but that is basically it. You sat there and watched each step go. Let's add this vignette in, make it a little bit more dreamy. Now, there you go. It really is. I told you it was easy. So we've taken an image from a raw file. Get back over to him here. From a raw file, which is that. Went into our basic edits in Lightroom, which is that. Threw it into Photoshop, applied our blur, and we're left with this. Um, quite a powerful little tool you can use. And it's really, there again, incredibly easy to do. And it truly is that easy. We've taken our raw file from Lightroom, applied a few edits to it, threw it into Photoshop, made our dreamlike effect, took less than, what, five minutes, and then put it back into Lightroom.
for a few final edits and voila. Uh, Photoshop does not have to be intimidating once you understand some basic concepts. And uh, you know, effects like this are easily achievable by anybody. Really, it's not that hard. But if you do have any questions about this or anything else, of course, put them in the comments below. Email me, message me, whatever you want to do. I'm literally everywhere. Um, thank you again for joining me on Straight Talk on Photography. And it's always hard saying goodbye, but uh, goodbye. We'll be back.